Hey, what's up everybody? Thank you for joining the channel. This is Phoenix Studios. I'm Phoenix. Today is the first installment of a 10 part series on an introduction to drawing. This is also going to chronicle my own personal journey in art and I'm looking forward to sharing that with you as well as along the way I hope to teach you some things. And my goal here is for you to get out there and create something and show you that it is possible and you can do it. So today's lesson will be going over the materials necessary for drawing. These are just some of the materials. This is in no way a comprehensive or exhaustive list. You can use some of these. You can use none of these. You can add many different things to this. These are just some of the things that I have come to use most frequently over the journey of art. So first, let's cover our pencils. As you can see here, I've got a whole group here of pencils, a whole bunch of pencils here. And you may be thinking to yourself, you know, you, you only use one pencil. What are, what are all these for? And let's go ahead and discuss some of those. So we've got, as you can see, these pencils have numbers on them. We've got from 8B to 6H here. As far as brands go, let's not really pay too much attention to brands. These weren't chosen for any specific reason. These are just some things that I had on, on hand here. So let's talk about these numbers. So the H stands for hardness. That's, that's the hardness of the pencil. The Bs, that designates it as black, meaning that the lead is softer, this lead is harder, which means that when you use it, the softer lead gives you a much darker stroke. These H pencils, the lead is much harder, it gives you a much lighter stroke. It doesn't break down on the paper as you as you shade as you sketch so these ones in the middle those are your your mid ranges they're neither super soft or super hard they're just right there in the middle and for me personally honestly this isn't even a designated as a drawing or sketching pencil this is just your Dixon Ticonderoga HB number two pencil you probably filled in bubbles on exams with these pencils, but this just happens to be my favorite pencil to draw with. With this pencil, using different pressures, I can get really light shadows, and with a firm pressure, I can get some really dark tones. And varying my pressure between the two, I can get everything in between there in this range from dark to light this this is my favorite pencil to work with i can do a whole drawing or sketch with just this pencil and you can too i'm actually going to show you how to do that so over here next to the pencils you see we have a bunch of different shaders and blenders these are called blending stumps and they're you know made out of paper and wood fibers these that are rolled up paper are called tortillons and these bo both work very differently. So with these blending stumps and these tortillons, what you can use those for is really smoothing out your shadows and highlights and you can really use them to blend and get some nice tones. They both work different. Of course, I'll go into much more depth about how to use these later on but this just kind of gives you an idea how they're used they're very effective they create some very nice effects over here we've got some different types of erasers you know this is just a basic artist eraser here this is called a vinyl eraser these these work pretty well this is what's known as a kneadable eraser it's kneadable because you can knead it into different shapes and forms depending on how you need it at the time. It's, it's something you can squish, you can tear it apart, you can use it to get into really fine areas and remove detail work. 
Over here we've got some sandpaper and an emery board. These are actually something you use after you sharpen your pencil. You've got your pencil sharpener here. You sharpen your pencil and you get the foundation for the tip that you want on your pencil. With these you come in and you can do that final polishing up sharpening. And you can get a really fine point with an emery board or a piece of sandpaper. Something else I use quite a bit over the years is a mechanical pencil. These are great for your really detailed lines. You know, you don't have to sharpen them. You can get in there and make some really fine lines. They do tend to be on the harder side, which means when you put down a line, it's more difficult to get rid of those pencil marks when you erase, but they still hold a lot of value and they still serve a purpose in my artwork. This is a pencil holder. You know, these, some of these drawing pencils can get pretty pricey depending on which, which kinds you buy. And as you sharpen them, you'll get to a point where it doesn't necessarily rest too well in your hand anymore. They start getting shorter and shorter as you sharpen them. And they're, you know, they can be too expensive for you to throw away. So with this little pencil holder, you slide the pencil in there, slide this clasp up, holds it in place, and now you've just extended the length of your pencil and the life of your pencil as well. These, these are a great tool here. Over here we've got a ruler that's obvious for, you know, measuring things, drawing straight lines, things like that. Then we've got a sketchbook and that's pretty self-explanatory. If you're going to draw, you need something to draw in or on, right? This is workable fixative. This isn't something that's mandatory, but this comes in very handy. This protects your work. So after you've finished a drawing, helps prevent it from being smudged or deteriorating. You shake it up and apply it much like a light coat of spray paint and it just protects your work over the years. And the nice thing about it, it's called workable because later if you want to come back in, do some more touches to the artwork, you've got this at hand. So I'll basically be approaching these videos as if you've never experienced drawing it of any form before, not even a, a stick figure. That's how I'm gonna address this. We'll, we'll start at the ground. And something else I really wanna focus on is that a lot of this stuff can seem intimidating and daunting to beginners because they don't have a lot of money to go out and buy any of these art supplies. I really want to focus on showing you how you can create quality artwork for minimal expense on a very small budget. For example, to be 100% honest, you can create amazing artwork with your pencil sharpener, an HB pencil, and a sketchbook. Those are the only tools that you truly genuinely need. And I'm going to show you how to create artwork with all this stuff, but I'm also going to show you some drawing that you can do with just these tools. I've heard some artists talk about this exact thing, and I wholeheartedly disagree with the opinion of many, many artists out there. Some believe that you cannot create quality artwork with inadequate art materials. I've heard art teachers say that they heard students blame themselves for being untalented when it was just their supplies keeping them from doing a good job. To me, that's honestly, that's total nonsense. I have seen people create amazing artwork with just this pencil and that's it. Now granted, these other materials, they do make life easier, but it's not 100% necessary for you to create amazing artwork. All right, now let's talk about paper. So I've got this sketchbook here. This is just mixed media paper, meaning that you can use pencil on here, you can use pen, you can use, you know, pastels and chalks. Uh, it's not really made for watercolor, I would say, but this is something, this particular sketchbook, 
I purchased, you know, very cheap. I don't want to mention any stores in particular, but you know, this sketchbook, some of these pencils here, some of these blending stumps, they were just purchased at local stores, very inexpensive. And I really don't want to promote that you need to go out there and spend a lot of money to get into art, to get into drawing or any of that. I really want to show you how you can do this on a minimal budget. So with that being said, in our next video, we're going to cover basically how to create a drawing using these tools right here and nothing more. Your eraser, your pencil sharpener, your number two HB pencil, and your sketchbook. In video number two, that's what we'll be discussing. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the first video. Stay tuned for the next and can't wait to see you. Go create something.